Thank you. Okay, we can go ahead and start. So thank you for having me. Uh, tonight I'm going to share with you my interest in illegal drugs. I am not a user or a lawyer or a social worker. I am a nerdy academic who's just really curious about drug policy. We've had a complicated relationship with drugs in our society for a really long time. Drugs seem to have an identity crisis to us. The stories around the drug trade are fascinating, where they start from, who produces them, who transits them, who consumes them, and ultimately who regulates them. How has US drug policy changed over time? What issues do we focus on locally, nationally, internationally? Where is it we are going? I'm so fascinated by drug policy that I um, started a PhD program here in history at MSU. My goal is to focus on the history of US drug policy and consider how and when cycles happen. What can we learn by digging deeper into historical trends around the use of drugs in the US and our response? So how did I get here? I've thought about drug policy for a long time. My fascination really came in grade school when this ad hit the after school lineup. Do you guys remember this ad? This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? OK, well, I had a lot of questions. This ad made no sense to me. Um, it still doesn't make sense to me. I studied Latin America in college, and I was lucky enough to have some great job experiences after that, including at the State Department. And one project my office worked on from DC was in Nizalco Prison in El Salvador that houses 18th Street gang members. And when I went to visit, standing inside this prison was both terrifying and humanizing. It's hard to look in the eyes of gang members and remember that they are people. So from prison management to drug interdiction efforts, my work with the State Department was eye-opening. I got to see firsthand the impacts of drug trafficking in Latin America and the challenge of, challenges of enforcement both at home and abroad. The drug trade truly is a complicated web. So I eventually came to work on local projects here in Montana. That included writing grants for drug courts to help addicts avoid the cycle of the prison system. And where I started to see how complicated drug policy was from a user perspective was when I began following the numbers of pregnant women struggling with addiction. Access to care is complicated in a rural place like Montana. Only 7% of the population of substance users here are getting treatment. So I'm pulling from these diverse experiences and pondering, how do I come up with a dissertation topic? How do I take the methodology of history and get beyond our political discourse about drugs and write a book that brings this topic into a new light? We sometimes forget that history is a fabulous avenue for providing analysis of how we got to where we are today. We are a result of policy decisions from decades ago. So here are some ideas for how I could craft a dissertation from different view, viewpoints. When thinking internationally, historians have yet to really look at a unified picture of how US intervention has affected local communities around the world. I could start by looking at Latin America and track how local communities have adapted and changed because of the drug trade. Where I've seen it impact local communities outside the US is in stories from across Central America, which is where I did my mo the most of my work with the State Department. I heard stories of a rise in street level violence, extortion, corrupt government officials, money laundering, overflowing prisons. Ultimately, the impact in local communities in Central America is playing out in the migrant crisis we see today. Mexico is another area where the local impact of the drug trade has been intense. Drugs have gone through Mexico for a long time, but enforced in different ways. From a relationship standpoint, how quickly we forget our long, complicated history with Mexico. The US has impacted everything from their revolution to their current legal code changes. Another way to tell this story would be through how we treat drug addictions. Consider historian David Courtright's insight that what we think about addicts depends on who is addicted. We certainly don't treat all addicts the same. Different drugs have different sentences in our penal system, and we've treated users differently over time. I could dig, dig into the examples of the two federally enacted narcotics farms of the 1930s, which were basically prisons for drug addicts that included some drug rehabilitation, like farming. One was in Kentucky and one was in Texas, and one of their most famous patients, or inmates, was author William Burroughs, whose book is up here. Another avenue entirely would be to look at women. Women in particular are a unique demographic in this study. How have they been targeted for certain drugs over time? Think of the nervous lady of the late 19th century, 
the frantic housewife of the 1950s. Are we sympathetic or judgmental to their drug use? I could consider as well the role of prescription drugs. In my research, I dug up an article about doctors in Butte in 1931 who were working with substance users to get clean. Some of them were prescribing two weeks of cocaine or morphine to patients to help them slowly wean off. Giving them this large of a dose allowed them to sell to other addicts. The community pushed back for legislation for smaller amounts to be prescribed. And to me, it echoed the prescription drug epidemic of today. While Montana struggles more with meth and alcohol, we still have rising rates of prescription drug use, and access to these drugs is certainly of concern across our communities. And finally, another avenue entirely would be to consider international comparisons for how other countries handle drug users. Needle exchanges started in Switzerland in the 1990s. Portugal decriminalized small amounts of drugs in 2001. The opposite end of the spectrum is Duarte in the Philippines, who's pushed an intense crackdown against drug users. To me, the dichotomy of US drug policy has always been between this hard and soft side approach. This quote from a local academic journal expresses this sentiment. The US is caught between a politics of public health reform and a politics of law and order, two impulses that have always revolved around each other in an uneasy orbit. So whether thinking internationally, nationally, or locally, drug policy impacts us personally in overwhelming ways. I, for one, just think it's a really fascinating subject to study, and I'm the biggest advocate for using history to understand new things about it. And so when I finish my dissertation, and I look like this, I'll be sure to come back and let you know what I find out. Thank you so much for having me tonight. <laughs> <laughs>